Hello, in this video we will demonstrate model-based testing when system architecture is defined in SysML. For model-based testing we will use vanilla SysML execution. No hard code, no extra stuff on top of that. So for system of interest uh, we'll demonstrate full authority digital electronic controller FADEC of error engine. In this project, FADEC is described comprehensively and consistently using SysML language. This includes defining the requirements of FADEC, importing them into SysML model, and analyzing these requirements, proposing multiple operations, including the flow of control and data to fulfill these requirements, proposing a high-level system architecture, modeling the interaction between subsystems, and varying system performance for simulation. Here is the source. Uh, the, this is great paper based on this, which this project is uh, created. We will demonstrate a descriptive full authority digital electronic controller, FADEC, including the system architecture model, capturing requirements, structure, interfaces, function, function states, parameters, and most importantly, the whole model based testing method with the every step demonstrated including how to create test context, how to capture system execution scenarios as sequence diagrams, how to convert sequence diagrams into test cases and tied to requirements which they will test, how to orchestrate test cases with activity diagram, how to reset system between test and feed required system configuration as instance before test, how to capture testing results with timestamp, and how to schedule tests to run nightly and get results into file by starting Cameo in headless mode automatically. This is part of the uh, series of uh, demonstrations. Uh, um, next, uh, we will uh, demonstrate uh, in the other videos uh, MBSC method and framework for control logic modeling. This will include analysis of stakeholder needs, functional analysis and logical architecture, system requirements and transition to solution architecture. Then you will see another uh, video on change impact analysis and system engineering collaboration and requirements information integration. So with that, I will switch to the first topic. This will be descriptive model overview. Here we have system stakeholder uh, needs. This project is follows magic grid framework and method. Uh, you can find this uh, uh, available, you know, from um, uh, multiple sources. Here we see those stakeholder needs and they describe, you know, what is expected from the system. For example, engineer start on flame out is the area we will concentrate, you know, to test this capability of the engine. And here we see that uh, it is restart to eliminate flame out, that the engine needs to restart immediately. Restart options, there are four different options. Uh, there are two automatic options to auto relay and spool down restart, uh, auto relight and spool down restart. Uh, then there are two uh, options which require preparation of aircraft is windmill restart and uh, assisted restart. And how that happens uh, and the post restart procedures uh, and uh, so on. So all of that is we can find here in those requirements. As a result of that, we create the um, uh, system uh, behavior model, which is actually use cases at the beginning to capture system uh, operations as a services which system provides to environment. That's like use case. And uh, we see here top line uh, functions uh, as a use case described here. Those are visible functions uh, for environment. Uh, we see also what are the actors affecting uh, they, them and they are modeled here as external blocks because it is easier later on to incorporate them into the uh, architecture. We can get pro have properties interfaces. So here we see, for example, deliver power, control engine and vehicle management system is performing that. So control engine, we go deeper, we see control engine includes multiple use cases, including operating engine. And here we see again multiple use cases, including perform basic operations. And here we can see that uh, vehicle management system uh, sensors uh, uh, and starters are the actors influencing perform basic operation use case. Uh, when we go to the internals of the use case, we see the 
uh, workflow, how that is done. As a system is treated as a black box, uh, we actually identified also some parts of the system even at this level. But re really, we can just start with the FADEC as a black box and model what is the basic flow and alternative flows of events uh, uh, when the system is uh, performing this use case. And we concentrate on the object flows, which crosses the boundaries between external systems and the system. This will become interfaces, as you can see here, and the control flow, which is actually just next step in the process. And we can execute this actually and see how that works in order to check that the system is executed correctly. So we can see here, it's running and it's wait for power on. You could model those, uh, actually it is even suggested to model them as activities also, actions here, in order that uh, it would be allocated to this vehicle management system, but uh, we created them as a send accept events in order to uh, actions, in order to be able to control this execution sequence over here, have ability to power on. And we see what flows actually here. You see like exactly what flows with what parameters and now here state of the aircraft you can get it here and then the engine and you see here there is uh, circulating you know um, monitor flow uh, and so on and also you know like wane control uh, actuation uh, flow here we can send engine control command uh, engine control command and then choose what type of the start will have uh, start requested you know, for example maybe operate requested shutdown requested yeah start requested what type of start you know dry start so dry start is the only st uh, dry start is technology technology start uh, it is the one which will not uh, uh, end up with the engine idle. It's used to test the engine, so maybe not this time. Wet start is also the technological start. And then the power start is the only one which actually results into engine idling at the end. So here we see this is one level deeper. We go here and this level deeper allows us to uh, start functional analysis. When we decompose uh, our um, uh, FADEC into the uh, logical parts like starter, ignition system, DECU, digital electric control unit. Uh, still, we have external systems affecting it, and we go through the sequence of the engine start. As you can see, there is a lot of date details uh, here. Uh, the engine start is actually uh, starts uh, step by step, you know, increasing the speed of the engine and then disconnecting starters, disconnecting the igniters. And once we are reaching the uh, required speed, we exit the start and we go to the engine operational. As we can see here, uh, engine is now operational. So when the engine is operational, we uh, actually uh, get the throttle demand from the engine. We uh, go through the sequence to keep the engine idle, engine stable, and uh, we monitor its flame out. Once the flame out happens, then we kind of go to the specific restart uh, sequence uh, based on the engine uh, characteristics. And we'll talk about this restart sequence uh, in a moment. So uh, here we, we discuss the functional analysis uh, in this project, um, but this is not all. Here we have also system context in this project, uh, engine control context where the system is in the middle and the environment and signals are uh, going in and out. Then there are measurements of effectiveness, what affects the system like safety, fuel efficiency, we got them from the stakeholder needs. Um, and then functional analysis, we already discussed, those functional analysis gets allocated to logical groups. So a lot of functions, like 50, 80 functions allocated to logical groups of the system. And that's how we get the logical structure of the system. Here we see FADEC is composed of engine sensors, fuel control system, fuel metering units, ignition starter, and so on. And uh, DECO is the main part of this um, digital electric control unit, right? And then when we take a look, you know how that looks from inside, from uh, internal block diagram, you know how that uh, uh, FADEC um, is composed of. We get um, uh, uh, logical architecture as a result of functional analysis. All those interfaces are based on the object flows and the functional analysis and um, crossing the boundaries of swim lanes. So that's how we build those uh, interface blocks using pro pro parameter, uh, proper uh, proxy ports um, and interface blocks to define type of those proxy ports. And you can see here that um, 
For example, this becomes the legate connector because the DECO is communicating with uh, vehicle management system. And uh, this would look like this, like directly. But because we want to keep the module architecture, we say, OK, this goes here. And this one goes here. And that's completely OK. This is assembly connector. This is just delegate connector. So the, we delegate the automatically assigned. We delegate the interface uh, uh, to DECO. And this is a very concentrated logical architecture uh, compared to very big, you know, functional analysis results, which we got, you know, performing all the steps, you know, of the restart, of the power start, and so on. Uh, now, from here, actually, we can generate the interface control documents. You see here, kind of huge, you know, uh, still, you know, not uh, as huge as uh, would be for the larger systems. And uh, here we have this uh, system uh, structure, which also has uh, not only functions allocated to components, but uh, also has behavior described in state machine, where we define the restart engine states. So system is in running state. When the flame out is detected, we go to the check engine speed and depends on the check engine speed and parameters, depending on the parameters of the system, like non-dimensional rotation speed, we go to the auto relight spool down restart or preparation, preparing Arctic, uh, aircraft. So the preparing aircraft is when the speed is low, those two when the speed is high, and then we can uh, do this automatically. So this uh, happens automatically, those are manually. And then if it's manually, we prepare Arctic aircraft. If once aircraft is prepared, we go to one or another windmill restart or start uh, assisted restart. So the assisted restart uh, is uh, happening when altitude is below windmill uh, envelope uh, and um, when it is higher than the uh, windmill envelope we go to the windmill restart and then once restarted we check that the engine is uh, uh, idle if engine is uh, ignite uh, actually not idle is ignited uh, we wait for engine idle once engine is idle we go back to running uh, state of the engine